One of the brightest representatives of the classical school of naturalism, Theodore Dreiser came to literature when readers the world over were already immersed in the works of Gamlin Garland, Stephen Crane, and Frank Norris. The writer, who developed in his works the basic ideas of his contemporaries' work, explored the interwoven forces of nature and social tendencies by the example of concrete human life. As a novelist, Dreiser did not forget the theme of the curse of the flesh, invariably having compassion for the heroes of his creations. In this video we look at the biography of Theodore Dreiser. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video, and also write in the comments about whose biography to make a video about. Childhood and Youth Theodore Herman Albert Dreiser was born August 27, 1871 in Terre Haute, Indiana, located in the Midwest. The Dreiser family was poor. The head of the family took any job, but money to support nine children was catastrophically insufficient. In connection with the wretchedness of the financial situation of the future writer at the end of high school left the paternal home and went to Chicago to work. There, not afraid of hard work, the guy managed to work as a janitor in a restaurant, and handyman in the shop, and even as a longshoreman. In 1889, the ambitious young man successfully passed the entrance exams to Indiana University in Bloomington. However, due to lack of money Herman did not manage to graduate. In search of a better life Dreiser moved from city to city. During the years of wandering, from 1892 to 1894, Theodore had time to visit the newspaper reporter in Pittsburgh, Toledo, Chicago, Lewis and New York. Literature His debut novel, Sister Carrie, was published in 1900. The plot is based on the story of a provincial girl, Caroline, Carrie, Mieber, who came to Chicago in search of a better life. The work clearly shows the traditional motif of money for the American author. The writer paints a vivid description of the baseness to which man can go for his own well-being. The novel's key characters, Carrie and the two men, Druett and Jerstwood, who have played a defining role in her life, are physiologically alien to affection, gratitude, true appreciation, compassion and love. All three care only for their own gain and are willing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with their own interests at any moment. The second work, Jenny Gerhardt, was published in 1911. In the work it is about a nice, but poor as a church mouse girl with a victim complex, which for the welfare of loved ones goes to the status of concubines. In 1912, the first novel in the Desire trilogy was published, the book The Financier. The work, whose plot is based on the biography of American millionaire Charles Yerkes, tells readers the story of the life of Frank Cowperwood. The protagonist was born into a family of small-time bank clerk, who on reaching adulthood his son arranged his beloved child to work in the firm in which he himself worked. Proved himself in the organization as a talented businessman, Frank after a while left to conquer Philadelphia. There the stockbroker conducted a couple of successful operations and became a millionaire. The new status allowed the young entrepreneur to enter the elite circles of Philadelphia high society. In addition to describing the financial machinations of the protagonist, the book also contains a second storyline about Cowperwood's personal life. Dreiser described the character of his novel Unvarnished, endowing him with both positive and negative qualities. In the end, unwilling to reckon with the generally accepted principles and rules of conduct in high society, Frank's rebellious nature leads him to prison. The action of the next novel, 1914's Titan, takes place in Chicago. Incapable of drawing conclusions, Frank returns to his native environment of swindling. Now his target is the gas and transportation companies. The financial genius chooses for himself the carrot and stick method. He bribes some officials and intimidates others. Competitors, whose interests are inadvertently infringed upon by the businessman, enter into a bitter war of power with the undesirable businessman. Frank Cowperwood loses the battle and goes into the shadows. At the same period and in the family life of the protagonist begins a black streak. His wife, having found out about her husband's affair with a young girl, tries to commit suicide. Frank rescues his beloved and persuades her to go with him to London, where, he assures her, they will start a new life. The action of the third and final novel, Stoic, published after the death of the writer in 1947, are unfolding in the capital of France. There Cowperwood is engaged in the construction of the subway line. 
Despite his advanced age, the darling of fortune is still trying to put all the money in his pocket of the world. This time his kidney disease interferes with his plans. After another exacerbation, the man, whose ambitions did not allow him to live a happy and quiet life, dies, having had time before his death to confess his sins to his wife and mistress. In between the publication of the Desire series books, Genius, 1915, American Tragedy, 1925, and The Plot, 1946, hit the shelves. The semi-autobiographical novel Genius introduces the reader to the life of the artist Eugene Vitla, whose personality undergoes a change when he finds himself in a bourgeois environment. Dreiser divides Eugene's entire life path, described in the novel, into three stages, youth, struggle, and rebellion. The story is woven out of creativity and passions, from the love of women and art, from the dizzying success and bitter falls, will not leave anyone indifferent. The plot of the second work, The American Tragedy, is based on real events that took place in America in 1906. This work can logically be divided into three parts. In the first one the reader gets acquainted with the main character Clyde Griffiths who travels with his pious family through the cities of America on a religious mission. Living in poverty, the young man is alien to the worldview of parents who believe it is their duty to set as many people as possible on the right path. The young man, with all his soul striving for a better life, got a job as a delivery boy in a hotel, where his new friends introduced the boy who did not know the good life to alcohol and visits prostitutes. Clyde's desire for riches grew inexorably as he watched the idle pastime of the wealthy patrons. The second part of the novel begins in Chicago. It was there that the protagonist fled after an unpleasant incident that happened to him in his native land. In the city of great opportunity, he met his uncle, who offered him a job in a collar factory. Griffiths accepted the offer and immediately moved to Lycourt, New York. At the factory, the hard-working young man promptly secured a promotion. During the same period, his personal life also undergoes changes. He falls in love with his subordinate, Roberta, and, wooing the modest young lady, cools off to the once interesting person. Then the wayward noblewoman Sandra appears in his life. The third part is dedicated to Griffith's tossing between the rich coquette and the girl who loves him selflessly. The situation is complicated by the fact that Roberta is carrying a child under her heart, so Clyde cannot simply walk away from her. The book, The Seal, tells the story of life belonging to the orthodox religious currents of the Barnes family. The generational conflict of growing up with five children is the focal point of the work. Social Activities in 1927 Dreiser accepted an invitation to visit the USSR and to participate in the celebration of the anniversary of the October Revolution. He arrived in the Soviet Union in early November and was in Red Square on November 7. During his 77-day trip Dreiser visited Leningrad, Kiev, Kharkov, Rostov-on-Don, Baku, Tbilisi, Odessa and other cities, met with Vladimir Mayakovsky and Sergei Eisenstein. After the trip he published the book Dreiser Looks at Russia. In the early 1930s there were clashes of miners with the police in the mining areas of the United States, Harlan and Bell. Together with a committee of the Committee to Protect Political Prisoners, Dreiser goes to the scene. He was met with threats of physical violence from the mine owners and the police. A lawsuit was initiated against Dreiser and he was offered to withdraw it on condition that the writer stop covering the events. However, Dreiser continued to appear in newspapers and on the radio, reporting on the situation, the beatings of union members and police massacres. In 1932 he published Tragic America. Dreiser often spoke at rallies and was published in the pages of the communist press in the United States. In 1932 he supported an American Communist Party candidate in the election campaign. In 1932 he was a member of the World Anti-War Congress, the initiative committee of which included Henri Barbusse, Maxim Gorky, Albert Einstein. In 1938 Dreiser was delegated to the anti-war conference in Paris, opened in connection with the bombing of Spanish cities. In the summer he visited Barcelona, where he met with the president and prime minister of the country. On his way back he visited England, where he hoped to meet with members of the English government. In the United States he managed to get a brief meeting with Roosevelt. After that, he unsuccessfully tried to organize a committee to supply food to Spain. Eventually several cargo ships carrying flour were sent to Spain at Roosevelt's direction. 
In July 1945 Dreiser joined the Communist Party USA. Personal Life The first wife of the literary genius was Sarah Osborne White. With the red-haired beauty the writer met in 1893, Theodore Dreiser, a young reporter for the September Lewis paper, was assigned to accompany the winners of the Best Teacher contest to the Chicago World's Fair. Among the winners was his future wife. Simplicity, beauty, and shyness of the girl captivated the writer. In a state of love euphoria, the couple got engaged. However, soon after that, the novelist began to notice significant differences between him and his beloved. The society of the time condemned physical contact between young people who had not legalized their relationship. Dreiser was not close to such a philosophy, but White believed in the institution of marriage and for five years did not let Theodore near her, declaring that intimacy would occur only after marriage. On December 28, 1898, Herman Theodore Dreiser and Sarah Osborne White were legally married in Washington. As the writer was in constant contact with the intellectual bohemia of the time, he tried to introduce Sarah to this circle as well. The attempt was unsuccessful, the girl could not relax in the bourgeois atmosphere alien to her. However, this circumstance did not prevent the young lady with a purely feminine insight to observe the indifferent attitude of representatives of this society to her husband. It is known that Dreiser had other women in New York. He was quick to fall in love and just as quick to cool down. This was the case until Thelma Cudlip appeared in the writer's life. Thelma was the daughter of one of the employees of the magazine, whose editor was Dreiser. Herman admitted to his wife that he had inflamed feelings for another. In 1909, their divorce took place. Already at the end of his life, in 1944, Theodore married his cousin Helen Richardson. And Dreiser continued his tireless spiritual search until the end of his days. The roads of search led him to the Congregationalist Church, where he began to go to communion, and to the Communist Party. In both, he was led by his faith in the ideal, which, oddly enough, coexisted with his positivist convictions. This belief illuminates from within everything Dreiser created. Unlike his heroes, Dreiser discovered the world of true values early on, he became one of their creators. To this day he remains in art, an unshakable giant of realism, Wolf. Death. Theodore Dreiser died of heart failure on December 28, 1945, in Los Angeles, California. The writer's creative legacy is preserved in collections of novels and short stories. Among other things, in 1931 and 1951 in the United States directors Joseph von Sternberg and George Stevens made films based on the novel by the novelist American Tragedy. The writer's works Jenny Gerhardt, 1933, and Sister Carrie, 1952, were also screened. Interesting Facts About Theodore Dreiser's Biography The failure of Sister Carrie so undermined Dreiser's health that he began to consider suicide. His brother was forced to recommend that Theodore be treated at a clinic. Taking advantage of this advice, the writer underwent treatment and then began to work as an editor. In 1927 Dreiser visited the Soviet Union, where he took part in the celebration of the 10th anniversary of the October Revolution. He visited Moscow, Leningrad, Kiev, Kharkov, Baku, Tbilisi and other Soviet cities, met with Mayakovsky and Eisenstein. After the trip he published the book, Dreiser Looks at Russia. In 1930 the writer was nominated for the Nobel Prize in Literature. In 1944 the American Academy of Arts and Letters awarded Dreiser the Honorary Gold Medal for Outstanding Achievements in Art and Literature. In 1932 he became a member of the World Anti-War Congress, whose initiative committee included many writers and scientists, Henri Barbusse, Maxim Gorky, Albert Einstein.